There's no doubt about it. I consider myself a huge Pixel fanboy. I've owned every Pixel device there is ever since its inception back in October of 2016. With each iteration, Google made the Pixel lineup a little bit better and a little bit smarter. In fact, if we're talking about the smartest smartphone money can buy, the Pixel 7 Pro has quite the lead. With very useful smart features like voice to text dictation, hold for me, and even now playing. If you were to ask me about a month ago what's the best Android device that money can buy, I would without a doubt have said the Pixel 7 Pro. It's without a doubt an absolute steal of a device, especially when you consider the price to performance ratio. But then this year in 2023, Samsung released the S23 Ultra, a phone that for the life of me I didn't see coming. Sure, I mean on the exterior this phone's design resembles that of last year's S22 Ultra, but it's the internal refinements along with the better performing cameras and the excellent software optimization that really makes this phone stand out. I would go as far as saying this phone right here is the phone of the year thus far. After all, this is the phone that made me fully switch over to Samsung as my daily driver from the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So as you guys can probably tell, I find myself in a little bit of a predicament. A pickle if you may. The Pixel 7 Pro and the S23 Ultra are hands down two of my favorite Android devices of all time. Each of these phones share their own unique characteristics that set them apart from one another. Yet at the same time, both are quite similar in the way that they do operate. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys my honest thoughts on both of these devices. And by the end of the video, let me know down in the comments below which one you decided to go with and why. How's it going everyone, my name is RJ and today we'll be comparing the Pixel 7 Pro alongside the S23 Ultra. Starting off with what I think is the most important to a lot of you watching, the price to performance ratio. On paper, the Pixel 7 Pro seems to have it all. A big 6.7 inch display with a 120Hz refresh rate, a large 5000mAh battery, top tier cameras, along with Google's new Tensor G2 chipset that highlights powerful AI and machine learning capabilities that Google is very well known for. And the thing is, you can grab the 120 gigabyte variant of this phone for $899. Solely judging from a price to performance ratio, this phone is an absolute steal. But then the S23 Ultra ends the chat and things start to get a little bit more complicated. On paper, the S23 Ultra features a massive 6.8 inch OLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate, a large 5000mAh battery, very capable cameras, as well as the new Snapdragon HN2 processor for Galaxy, a Qualcomm based chipset that is undeniably the performance king at the very moment at least on an Android. But here's the kicker. The S23 Ultra starts at $1,199 for the 256GB variant. So naturally, now the question becomes, is the S23 Ultra $300 better than the Pixel 7 Pro? Design-wise, the preference largely depends on which phone you think looks better. It's very subjective. The S23 Ultra looks incredible, especially in this black colorway. It features a blocky aesthetic, slightly curved display with a P-shaped camera cutout. In the hands, it feels very well built premium and very sturdy. The Pixel 7 Pro's look has definitely grown on me over time. It features a very unique camera array that stretches across the back of the device. From afar, it's not hard to tell that this phone was made by Google. Aesthetically, I think it looks fantastic, with a very prominent camera layout and well accompanying metal accents. Both these phones are IP68 certified, meaning that they can survive underwater up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. Honestly, I do prefer the minimal aesthetics and design of the S23 Ultra, but both of these phones are major W's in the design department. You can't go wrong with either one. When comparing the displays, there's no doubt about it. Samsung continues to dominate the smartphone industry in the display department. But that's not to say the Pixel 7 Pro has a bad screen. It's just that the display found on the Ultra is that good. Just going off the simple eye test, the Ultra does have the better color reproduction, the better vibrancy, and the Samsung panel does get brighter. The S23 Ultra maxes out at 1750 nits. Meanwhile, the Pixel 7 Pro tops out at 1500 nits. While both these phones do get plenty bright, the Ultra is significantly and noticeably brighter, which does make a difference when using your phone outdoors in sunny conditions. The Pixel 7 Pro's display has a screen to body ratio of 88.8%. .8%. Meanwhile, the S23 Ultra is rocking an 89.9% .9 screen to body ratio. So you do get slightly more display and a little bit less bezel on the S23 Ultra, but ultimately the 1.1% is negligible in real life conditions. Without a doubt though, the S23 Ultra wins in the display comparison. The Pixel 7 Pro's display is more than adequate, but Samsung continues to dominate the display department. 
environment. The Pixel 7 Pro also lags behind the S23 Ultra when it comes to performance. The Snapdragon HN2 for Galaxy chipset is an absolute beast. On paper, the Pixel 7 Pro already has a hard time holding its own when it comes to Geekbench scores. But to be fair, Google never intended the Exynos based Tensor chipset to compete with the likes of Qualcomm and Apple Silicon. Google's primary focus has always been AI and machine learning for the Pixel lineup. And for those purposes, the Pixel 7 Pro has been great. Thanks to great software optimization and 8GB of RAM, the Pixel 7 Pro is no slouch in the performance department. It's a great performer, it doesn't lag or jitter, animations are smooth, and overall the phone is a pleasure to interact with on a daily basis. But once again, the S23 Ultra is just a different animal in its own right. It's in a completely different category, which I never thought I'd be saying based on my past experiences with the Ultra lineup. This year, this phone flat out flies. One UI 5.1 is very well optimized. Once again, scrolling, fluidity, and animations are so well refined on this phone. I would even go as far as saying the S23 Ultra with One UI is smoother than the Pixel 7 Pro and its Pixel UI experience. It just sounds completely wrong coming out of my mouth, but that's just how big of a step Samsung took this year with this phone. I love gaming on both of these phones, but in terms of performance, better frame rates, and overheating concerns, the S23 Ultra does do it better. The Pixel 7 Pro does tend to get uncomfortably hot when gaming for over half an hour. Meanwhile, the S23 Ultra seems to have no issues with thermals. It does get slightly warm while gaming, but not nearly to the level of the Pixel 7 Pro. Both of these phones are equipped with dual stereo speakers, and they do get plenty loud. But in terms of which one flat out sounds better, I gotta give it up to the S23 Ultra once again. Take a listen for yourself and you'll hear what I mean. Now, the theme of this comparison so far has been Samsung dominating the Pixel, but I promise you it does get better for the Pixel 7 Pro, just after this one final beating, the battery life. Despite both these phones housing 5000 mAh batteries, the screen on times between these two phones isn't even close. Samsung once again wins out. With adaptive refresh rate turned on and while on a 5G network for about 80% of my day, I could come away with around 6 hours of screen on time on the Pixel 7 Pro, which is decent. I wouldn't necessarily say that's bad screen on times. But once again, the Ultra is on another level. With the same usage as the Pixel 7 Pro, I can squeeze out anywhere between 8 to 10 hours of screen on time, which is just insane. This is easily a 2 day or even a 3 day battery phone, depending on your usage of course. My usage on both of these phones is pretty typical, just everyday regular human being stuff. I wake up in the morning checking out my business emails, then I head to the gym and scroll through social media in between sets. I make sure to send out a triggering tech tweet over on Twitter, and then I head on over to work at the lab. I usually get home around 5pm and I decompress by playing a few of my favorite mobile games. Then I proceed to read a few chapters of whatever self-help book I'm into. Finally, I conclude my usage by spending an hour on Duolingo learning Hangul or Korean. That's pretty much what a typical day of usage entails for me. So the difference between these two phones when it comes to screen on time with pretty much the same usage is vastly different. The Galaxy S23 Ultra also wins with its 45 watt fast charging compared to the Pixel 7 Pro's 33 watt speeds. You can regain about 60% of your battery life in just 30 minutes with the Ultra. Now we arrive at the part of the comparison where the Google Pixel 7 Pro has the advantage. If you care for haptics as much as I do, then you'll be more than satisfied with the finely tuned vibration motors found in the Pixel 7 Pro. Every interaction with this phone feels so satisfying. Google has really fine tuned the haptics to deliver the best vibrational feedback found on any Android phone. The S23 Ultra is slacking with its haptics. The haptics have slightly improved from what we got on the S22 Ultra, but still I would say that the haptics on the Ultra feel kind of cheap and sort of an afterthought for Samsung. Winner in the haptic department definitely goes to the Pixel 7 Pro. When it comes to software, AI and machine learning features are unmatched on the Pixel. Google's Call Assist suite delivers all kinds of calling features, where the Google Assistant will answer your phone call and give you a live transcript of the call in real time. There's also Hold For Me, where the Assistant will stay on the line and alert you when the person on the other end picks up. A really useful feature which I believe should be on every single smartphone. Then there's Clear Calling, which uses the Tensor G2's power to enhance phone calls by reducing the background noise. All of these AI features are actually very useful in everyday situations, which in my opinion makes the Pixel 7 Pro the smartest of smartphones. Of course, the S23 Ultra has the utility advantage in its arsenal thanks to the S Pen, 
which is extremely useful for jotting down a quick note, signing contracts, and editing photos and applications such as Lightroom. Most people love to write off the S Pen as a gimmick, but I find it to be pretty useful in certain scenarios. What's surprising though is, Samsung surprisingly enough beats Google in software updates. Samsung currently offers 4 years of Android updates for the S23 Ultra, with 5 years of security patches. The Pixel 7 Pro also gets 5 years of security patches, but Google has only promised 3 years of software updates, which is interesting to say the least, considering that technically Google is the father of Android. Finally, we make our way over to the cameras, and this is where things get a bit complicated. The S23 Ultra is impressive, with its 200 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and two 10 megapixel telephoto shooters, one with a 3x optical zoom and the other with a 10x optical zoom. The Pixel 7 Pro, meanwhile, is equipped with a 50 megapixel main camera, along with a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 48 megapixel telephoto 5x optical zoom cameras. When comparing the main lenses, the S23 Ultra tends to lean towards taking brighter pictures, with more saturation and more contrast. It's honestly difficult to say which picture is better. Both offer stellar pictures that are incredible in their own unique way. Exposure wise, we can say that the Ultra does beat out the Pixel 7 Pro, which definitely has the more dimmer shots. But at the same time, the pictures coming out of the Pixel 7 Pro do look more realistic in comparison. In the ultra wide comparison, the Pixel 7 Pro delivers images that reflect the reality of the scene and the environment, whereas Samsung delivers an image that is more vivid, brighter, and truer blue skies. Low light performance is also better on the Pixel 7 Pro. I noticed that the Ultra added too much warmth to these low light images, and some of these images taken from the Ultra look a bit too yellow. Portrait images are also better on the Pixel 7 Pro, with better looking bokeh and the subject is much more clearer and stronger in focus. In the telephoto department, Samsung reigns king in all of the zoom shots, clearly beating out the Pixel 7 Pro in the optical zoom comparisons. When you digitally zoom to 30x on both of these phones, the Pixel 7 Pro's images fall apart. Meanwhile, the S23 Ultra is able to deliver a pretty respectable image. In the video department, once again, Samsung takes the lead, with the ability to shoot in 8K at 30fps. The Pixel 7 Pro maxes out its HD HDR capabilities at 4K 30fps. In this comparison, as you guys can see, the S23 Ultra is much better in terms of quality. There's no denying it. In this comparison, the S23 Ultra proved to be the better phone in almost every major category. The S23 Ultra dominates in the battery, the display, and the performance department. But of course, you do have to keep in mind the $300 price difference between these two phones. So which out of these two devices would I choose? Well, my main daily driver as of now is the S23 Ultra. This is the phone that made me switch over from the iPhone. 14 Pro Max. So yeah, this phone is actually an incredible device. If you made it till the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below so I know exactly who my true supporters are. I appreciate each and every single one of you for watching my videos all the way through. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and as always, don't forget to flex with your tech.